after taking imatinib, there are several side effects that you can expect. The most common, by far, is fatigue. It can range considerably, though. It can be just a little bit harder to get up in the morning than before. But in general, we just recommend staying hydrated, keeping active, keeping new exercise, and a good general healthy diet. Another tip for fatigue is oftentimes taking it at night can help. So when the drug is at peak in your system, it's at night when you're asleep already. However, some patients have said taking it in the morning is better for them. So you have to play around with it and see what works best for you. The second most common is nausea. At some point, you'll get nauseous. This does tend to get better, though, as your body adjusts to it. Initially, however, you can take a nausea medication, generally about a half hour before you take the imatinib pill, just to get it in your system and ready before the imatinib hits your system. You can also take additional nausea medication throughout the day if you need. Eventually, hopefully, or eventually, you should not have to take it as often as your body adjusts. Uh, other things that can help with nausea are taking the pills with food or dividing the pill in half. See, so these pills you can break in half most of the time. Check with your pharmacist first, but you can either take, break them in half or get them prescribed in 100 milligram tablets instead of 400 milligram tablets. So you can take them either throughout the day or half in the morning and half at night. That can be very effective, not just with nausea, but some of the other symptoms you can have. The third most common with imatinib is edema or retaining fluid. Uh, unusual, or it's very unusual with this drug that the most common place is actually edema around your eyes. So you get these worse in the morning and then get better throughout the day. So that edema doesn't tend to respond as much to medications, but cold compresses um, can help. If you get the fluid retention in your arms or your legs or your ad abdomen, uh, you can take a diuretic um, prescribed by your provider that can help um, take down some of that fluid. It's not a permanent uh, solution, but it can help with some of the effects from it. Uh, a low sodium diet may also be beneficial. Benadryl can be helpful, but if it becomes significant, it oftentimes resolves with a short course of oral steroids. You just have to let your provider know so that we can help, uh, help you with those symptoms. Uh, muscle cramps after you've been, tend to be after you've been on treatment for a while and can be a long lasting effect. In fact, this is probably the most common side effect I hear on patients that have been on imatinib for greater than three years. Uh, the, most, uh, the best way we found to control this is hydration and good hydration, again, with taking your water bottle with you and drinking throughout the day. Sometimes magnesium and calcium supplements can be helpful with this as well. In extreme circumstances, we can utilize muscle relaxants, but those have its own side effects. So we tend to save those for, for pretty extreme cases. Diarrhea can also be an issue. Um, <coughs> again, ta taking it with certain foods can make a difference. So you may have to just play around with that a while. Otherwise, you can take over-the-counter anti-diarrheals, which are very safe to take whenever you have diarrhea, or um, sometimes probiotics and low-fiber diet are helpful. Any of these tyrosine kinase inhibitors can affect your thyroid. So we do monitor your thyroid levels with each blood, with, uh, blood draws, usually once or twice a year. If you find you're overly fatigued, having night sweats, or different symptoms, let your provider know and they may test it more frequently. But in general, we'll randomly check it. And if that does become an issue, taking oral supplements for your um, thyroid generally take care of the problem.